Morning. David's place. Hello. We need to come and speak to you. Well, we have to come. Are you here alone? No, no. Okay. Is this where you can show? Well, let's just get up here to work. Okay. There's a few. David, if you listen to what I'm going to say. Yes. Just. Um, we're from Kent Police and we're investigating the murders of Wendy Nell and Caroline Pierce in 1987. Okay? As part of that investigation, you've been linked as a suspect, both geographically and forensically. Okay? If you listen to what my colleague's going to say to you. All right, David, you're under arrest on suspicion of the murders of Wendy Nell and Caroline Pierce in 1987. Do you understand? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. You are being arrested to so secure and preserve evidence by means of questioning. So we can conduct searches, so forensic samples can be attained, and to prevent your disappearance. Do you understand? This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors at Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. The year is 1987 and two women, Wendy Nall and Caroline Pierce from Tunbridge, Wells, disappeared in separate incidents on their way home from work. For 30 years, their murders have remained a mystery and their families had no answers and no comfort as to what had occurred and who was responsible. It's only on the 4th of November 2021 that David Fuller, aged 67 from Heathfield, has been charged and found guilty of both of their murders and he's also been convicted of a string of other sexual offences against dead people. Firstly, we will talk about the story of Wendy and Caroline and pay our respects to these women that never had justice done until today. Wendy was 25 years old when she was discovered by her boyfriend dead in her bedsit. This was on Guildford Road in Tunbridge and the date was Tuesday the 23rd of June 1987. She had been sexually assaulted, beaten and strangled. On November the 24th 1987, Caroline, the second victim, who was 20 years old at the time, was murdered after she was abducted from outside her bedsit on Grosvenor Park. Her body was discovered by a farm worker three weeks later in a remote location in Romney Marsh. This was more than 40 miles away. She was naked apart from a pair of tights and had also been sexually assaulted, beaten and strangled. And all of these factors are what police describe as modus operandi. The fact that he dumped them in the same spot, he took them from the same area and there were similar ages, similar appearance. Everything he'd done to them was the same as well. This is how they connect serial killers from research over years and years and years. Initial investigations found no clear sign of forced entry to Wendy's bedsit. Detectives concluded that Caroline was attacked outside her home and several neighbours reported hearing screams. There was forensic evidence that was recovered from both of the crime scenes, but DNA profiling was in its infancy and despite forensic samples being taken from multiple men in the area, no matches were ever found. The murders remained undetected for more than three decades and throughout that period, cold case teams had been confident that one day they would get a breakthrough. In 1999, advances in forensic science meant detectives were able to find a DNA profile for the suspect of Wendy's murder. This was added to the national database and no matches were ever found and the offender remained at large for another 10 years. Over the coming years, there was regular reviews of the investigation and also enhancements in DNA techniques. But nine years later in 2019, detectives from the Kent and Essex Serious Crime Directorate continued to explore new possible leads and they found a different type of examination that could be carried out to find evidence relating to the murder of Caroline. Scientists were able to recover DNA for the first time and eventually linked both murders forensically. This led to a further review of the National DNA Database and focused around analysing profiles that could have family links to the suspect. Working very closely with the National Crime Agency, a list of 1,000 names was compiled and most of them were linked genetically very close. Police identified a priority set of around 90 and the breakthrough came after voluntary samples had been taken from 20 people in this priority set. One of them had been provided from a person in the Kent area and it was put onto the National DNA Database. Through this person, they was able to identify David Fuller. 
who at the time was 66 years old and living in Heathfield, East Sussex. It was determined that Fuller was the suspect and he was arrested at his home during the early hours of the 3rd of December 2020. The following evening, following a fast tracking of DNA samples, the Crown Prosecution Service gave the police the authority to charge him with two counts of murder and he was remanded in custody. A full DNA sample was taken from Fuller and a complex and lengthy investigation took place to compare it to other cases and both of the 1987 crime scenes. The modern forensic extraction techniques led to the recovery of compelling evidence which would place Fuller at the scene of both of the murders. His DNA was detected on a duvet, a towel and also a pillowcase that was in the victim Wendy's home. It was estimated to be at least a billion to one chance that it could have been anyone except him. Tests on DNA from Caroline's tights also showed a 160,000 times more likely to have originated from Fuller than any other person. A plastic bag that was found on the floor next to the headboard of the bed that Wendy was in was re-examined. A fingerprint detected on the bag was not on the fingerprint database and could only be compared when a suspect was arrested and it matched to Fuller. During the original investigation, work was also done to find a shoe print that was found on the blouse in Wendy's home. It was determined that at the time in 1987, the print matched the Clark's Sports Trek trainer. And following Fuller's arrest, a number of photos were found in his home where he was wearing the same style of distinctive trainer in the 1980s. During the initial police interviews, David said he didn't know Tunbridge well, but substantial evidence and paperwork from his Heathfield home showed that in the early 1980s he'd lived in Guildford Road. That was the same road that Wendy was murdered on. He sometimes also visited a friend on Grosvenor Park, and that is where Caroline lived. David worked as an electrician, and documents and receipts illustrated that he'd carried out jobs at multiple addresses within the town, and many of them were near to where the victims lived. Evidence also showed that David was familiar with the New Romney area. This is where Caroline's body was discovered, and that he'd holidayed there during the 1980s, and as a child, he had visited his grandparents who lived nearby. David was also a member of a cycle club, and one of the routes the members took directly went past the location where Caroline's body was found. It was further established that David had frequently gone to a restaurant in Tunbridge, where Caroline had worked. The restaurant was called Buster Browns, and was located in Camden Road, and it was a short distance from where Wendy worked in a shop that was called Super Snaps. David Fuller was also a keen amateur photographer and he's believed that he would have used his store several times to process camera footage. And when they searched his home in Heathfield, they found several sleeves of Super Snap pictures that he had had processed at the shop, which again linked him for the third time to the girls in just general day-to-day -day activities. This would go against what he said in the interviews where he said that he never knew them and didn't live in the area and didn't frequent any of the businesses that they worked at. The senior investigating officer, Detective Ivan Beasley said, Wendy Nall and Caroline Pierce had their whole lives ahead of them and it was cut short by a murder that wasn't solved for over 30 years. We have refused to accept that justice wasn't done and we knew it was only a matter of time before DNA profiling would help us to be able to track down the suspect. The evidence we now have is enough to convict David Fuller who carried out the depraved and appalling crimes. This time, Sergeant. Just push through. Suspicion of murder. In 1987, there was two murders. One of Wendy Nell. And there were two murders. Uh, one of Wendy Nell and one of Caroline Pierce. There's been an investigation and they've now been able to forensically link David Fuller to them offences. So we therefore attended his address today and he was arrested on suspicion of the murder of Wendy Neal and Caroline Pierce in 1987. So what a devastating story for Wendy and Caroline and what they must have gone through. And it's very easy to focus on the killers in these cases. And these women had so much going for them and so much personality and so much life in them. And he just stole it because 
he was dead inside. And this is nothing to admire or try to study or try to find answers to why David Fuller was the sick, depraved person that he was. It's just to understand that some people are, and that's the fact. Sadly, there was more victims. Following pleading guilty to the two murders of Wendy Nall and Caroline Pierce on November the 4th this year, Fuller was also pleaded guilty to 51 further offences relating to sexual offences on dead bodies. Some of the victims that had passed away were children as well. And he was also found in possession of extreme pornographic images. And some of them were of children as well. And of voyeurism. They found this evidence when they raided his home and found hard drives. And he was charged with them offences on the 4th of December 2020. He charged with 44 offences relating to 78 deceased females. Two of them were children under 18 years old and women over 85 years old. Sexual offences on the deceased females took place in a hospital mortuary that was in the Tunbridge area between 2008 and 2020. Officers have conducted extensive and sensitive inquiries working closely with Tunbridge Wales Police and the NHS to find the families of the victims. Detective Chief Superintendent Paul Rotherham said that Fuller used his role as an electrician in two hospitals to carry out heinous acts on deceased victims. Not only did he kill and assault two young women in 1987, he went on for 30 years to abuse dead bodies in the mortuaries. He had even photographed some of them and they were found on the computer that he was found with. The police said that part of their inquiries was to identify the victims and they found as many as 100 but they could only identify 81 of them and specially trained liaison police officers had to speak to the families in order to confirm their identities and give them reassurance that this could not happen again. So this story really does make you question everything about society and how are we even allowing somebody to be able to live for 30 years amongst us and nobody was able to figure out that what this man had done or the type of person that he was? Or maybe people did know the type of person that he was and felt like they shouldn't have reported it or they just thought he was a bit of a weirdo. Similar to the case of Wayne Cousins where friends and colleagues called him a rapist but they didn't think that this was something they should tell their superiors and maybe try to prevent somebody from getting hurt in the future. Because I struggle to believe that nobody knew that this man was capable or had done some of these offences. So I send my condolences to the families of all of the victims. And that is not just the people that he murdered, but also the people that he sexually abused that had already passed away. So I really appreciate you joining me today. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. And follow me online as well at Scar City Studios on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and TikTok. And rest in peace to Wendy and Caroline.